made it. Always in one. Made it out of Broom. Great spot. Just exhausting. Um, biggest problem with Broom was that um, pretty booked out and uh, we could only get six days in Broom. Luckily we had the two days rest um, just outside of Broom before we got there at the uh, was it the Broom Gateway Pit um, Caravan Park. It was good. So the first day obviously was um, having a walk around the town and then of course visiting the information center and go oh that looks good that looks good so before we know it the next couple of days we had the uh the, the pearl farm um we had the cruise and we had the camel ride and yeah just generally just boom and a bike ride so we got pretty well exhausted and it was just one thing after another i can see when you go to a spot like that some of those folk over there they uh you know, they take it easy for a couple of days and they go, oh, we're going to go and do this. Another couple of days off, and, oh, we're going to do that. So yeah, we uh, did well. There's a couple of things that uh, we didn't do that we wanted to do. But hey, as I keep on saying, why well, took everything off the, the, the list? It was a good excuse to come around again, the second time to go and do it. With a little bit of encouragement of some bread. Now these little guys have come around to graze. One's chasing one off and encourage there he goes. <laughs> He's running. <laughs> oh it's so comical. Okay, we're out here, sun's starting to go down. I see the dude. <laughs> Food's around. <laughs> Hey, you mentioned at the barbecue time, I'm not sure all your friends turned up. Just invited a few mates over for dinner. I think we'd got around. So I said to Jude we should do a reveal of our little pop-up barbecue. So, I should add that we're not endorsed by this company. We bought it out of our own expenses. Um, thought it was quite nifty. So this one here is the Fireside Outdoor. It's a pop-up fire pit. Now, there's some accessories, and we haven't got them yet, so we're just gonna make do with this. So I haven't had this out of the bag before. So, nice and handy, comes in its own bag. So it's Velcroed. So is it very heavy? No. Oh. Don't go throwing those questions at me, girl. I haven't done my research on that one. No, it's not heavy. I would say it's, I'd go about seven kilos, maybe. So there you go, you got this, um, like a gauze um, wire or mesh mat. You've got some support posts. Well, some support sides, I should say. And then bring a knife. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> right, so it's obviously just designed like a uh, a camp chair. Look at that. Now, the idea with this mesh is that obviously it won't burn the ground. It is incredibly strong. You can actually put a fair bit of um, heavy logs and things in there, but it burns apparently so much um, cleaner. There's plenty of air working around. It's meant to be less smokier. It's nice and lightweight. In this case here, obviously I'm not gonna burn the fire here close to here in the awning. I'm just gonna pick this up and take that out somewhere else and pop her down. And at the end of the day, I can take this to one of the uh, fire pits that are around here and uh, dispose of my ashes. And yeah, 
You can get um, a roll-out grill that can fit over the top, half a grill, you can make it half a grill or a full grill or something, and then you can scoop your ashes around and then put your pots on, but that's something that's uh, um, later down the track. All good? All right, so just a couple little things we should note when we're having a fire. One, respect your neighbours. Two, check the fire permits, seasons. Um, obviously don't go lighting a fire in the grass over there. Um, so I've got a little area here. I've got over here a, um, I haven't been running my grey water out. So I've got a bucket here of grey water. So if there's anything I can do that. And Judy doesn't know it, but sometimes keep something like a, like a, a, a towel or something nearby. You might need it to try and beat the bush and things. But, uh, and Judy, you know where the fire extinguisher is? Yes. We've got two, we've got one in the trailer and one in the van as well. Straight in the doorway, easy to get. Good one. Give us a, a quick note. I've kept it pretty um, small. I don't want a big flare up and things to start with. I'm just using a little bit of paper and hopefully that'll go. If not, we'll have blooper number two coming up. <laughs> um, the other thing too is respect the bush. Don't go out and cut down a green tree. I've seen a couple of people do it in parks and it's just like, man, this is our future generation of wood. Go that extra mile, walk a little bit further back, find a dead tree. There you go, roots and all, pulled it out of the ground, come up here, hacked it up. And uh, I've got way more kindling than I want, but it's a little scarce, so I'll make do with what I've got. So there you go, she's up and going. We'll touch in later and see what the smoke and the effect looks like. An update on the fireplace last night, great. Um, up nice and high, no smoke. Burnt everything to a real powdery ash. And um, before we went to bed last night, I was able to put it, transfer it into one of the barbecues that are here and uh, made sure all the embers were all safe and sound before we turned in for bed last night. And even it cooled down enough so that um, Jude and I actually packed it up. So uh, it's all packed away, ready for an early start. Alrighty, on it, it's all systems go, as you can hear again, Jude's keen to get to the next spot, it's got better internet she reckons, so uh, she's looking forward to catching up with everybody, it's been a, a day or two without uh, internet, um, we're heading only 120 odd k's down the road, so it's going to be nice, relaxing drive, set up early and uh, get to enjoy the rest of the day. So we're leaving Stanley's Rest, it's been a good spot. It's uh, been able to fit plenty of campers in and uh, great facilities. So uh, see you at the next spot. I think it's Lockie's, so uh, give it a try. Alrighty, just over an hour down the road and we've um, stopped here at the Sam Fire Roadhouse. Now the, uh, the interesting thing with the Sam Fire Roadhouse I've uh, read about there was this bloke, Eddie, he worked for the um, MRD, uh, the, uh, it's, it's something about the roading department, uh, main road department. Anyway, uh, Eddie was yeah, travelling this treacherous highways way back in the uh, early days, uh, rescuing many travellers that had uh, succumbed to no fuel or no water or tyres or breakdowns. Anyway, uh, he thought, I'll submit a, uh, an application to uh, set up a place and uh, yeah 1970 um, pretty much he uh, was pumping uh, fuel out of uh, 44 gallon drums to service vehicles that um, came through here and then not long after that I, I think by the end of 1970 he had um, he'd set up a Bowser and um, a Roadhouse and I think by 1974 he had a uh, um, accommodation as well, a, bar, a tavern, a bar. And uh, the, the whole reason I've um, stopped here is that Sandfire was given its name because of uh, Ludwig uh, Leichhardt. Met him before. Um, he named the town a comet way back in the early, um, our start in um, our Dingo and Beyond um, video, YouTube video. So look it up. Um, Leichhardt's uh, was in the riverbed and they saw a comet and uh, yeah that's how the town got its name so yeah I've met old uh, 
Ludwig Leichhardt again. So yeah, this place um, was a roadhouse um, and it was pretty successful. Sadly, uh, a fire back in the early 2000s um, burned it down to the ground. Um, and amazingly enough, within about 48 hours, they had an up and go type service station ready to go, um, temporary. And then later on, it was all rebuilt way back in um, 2010. And uh, I, I believe it's still owned by the family. However, um, the founder, I think the, he and his wife passed away in the uh, uh, early 2000s, I think it was. So yeah, we're gonna splash and dash here and make our way down to our, uh, our parking spot for the, for the night again. Coming to you. We are coming to you from Lockie's Landing at the moment. We left um, Stanley's Rest there, hoping to make it uh, the, uh, for an overnighter so that we can get into uh, 80 Mile Beach. But as you can hear from the wind, um, it kind of stuffed us up a bit. We don't really want to be sitting in a beach site getting pounded by sand and bits and pieces when we could be sitting up here for a day and um, see what happens. So here's uh, Lockie's Landing. So it's only, only a short little uh, uh, parking pad but it's nice and flat. There's a bit of, uh, bit of wood available. But uh, as I said, uh, about five or six fans quite comfortable in here and not far to 80 mile as well so I think it's only a matter of just down the road and then um, 10 k's um, down that road to 80 mile beach so uh, we're the only ones here at the moment and uh, waiting out this wind All in all, it was a good trip. Um, not far at all. We were only like uh, 10 k's from the, the intersection, and then there was another 10 k's. The road had been fairly freshly graded, so it wasn't too bad, but um, I had heard on caution and did between 15 and 20 kilometers an hour. And I was there early enough in the morning so that we didn't get any pressure. When we got here to uh, 80 mile reception, um, the office opens at eight. But uh, we weren't able to check in till nine. But the uh, good folks, as I say, checked us in to that lovely spot just behind me there. That'll do just lovely. We're only here for, a, for the day. The wind is still a little strong, but we've got a beautiful sunny day. Um, the cloud cover's meant to come in again tomorrow, so then we sort of elected the, it's not, not much fun with cloud around. And the wind's meant to be dying down here about midday, so. Um, We'll go and give it a crack. We'll go and have a look down the beach and uh, have a look at some, um, I understand there's lots of interesting shells and uh, the beach itself, I think the tide's going out. So there's apparently a pretty big beach down there when the tide goes out, but what am I talking about? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so um, I'll go and get a help too with some of the chores there and put things away and um, we'll go for a nice little stroll down the beach and enjoy the afternoon. Um, yeah, it's probably only blind about 30, 30 k's I think it was. It's not gonna die off hopefully. But uh, lovely park in the background, 80 mile, highly recommended by a lot of people and uh, yeah, I reckon it gets the old thumbs up for me, it's nice. We're in a little hollow there which is good and uh, yeah, we're going to go down and wriggle our toes in the sand, have a talk to some of the fishermen, see how they're going and uh, look at that, it's nice. It's been stirred up a bit by all the winds and the current but certainly you wouldn't get tired of looking at that.
Alrighty ho, everybody's leaving in a mass exodus. I suppose we've got to get on the tail of all this lot. I hope it don't hold too many people up because it's pretty slow. But yeah, we're on the move, out of here. Um, heading 100 k's down the road, um, which will be a few k's just shy of Port Hedland. Got to get this uh, in there early the next day. So uh, just got to take it nice and easy, take in the scenery, and um, yeah, been a great stay here at the uh, campsite. Top spot, please we made it. Well there you have it, some quick insight into the Port of Hedland. It's been around since 1896, population of 20,000. And it's, uh, we've got the uh, station life at De Grey, or we've been just past Pardu station. And of course we've had uh, 80 mile where you can chase salmon. And then uh, hopefully I might get to the Red Bank Bridge Lookout, I have seen it. That's where we can see the, the trains. Watch the giant wall carriers, the salt ships. So, uh, yeah, and of course, we're going to go into the Carrigini. One little thing I, I will probably miss out and would have liked to have gone, but it's the marble bar. But uh, could leave something for next time. We're all packed up, ready to go. Everything's emptied. Throw the rubbish away. We're on our way to Port Hedland. So, uh, it's been a nice day here at uh, De Grey's uh, River. Uh, it's a great rest area. As I was saying there with the Debur, uh, no, no, was it the Nagoya, Nagoy, Naguya Burr? Um, this was a campsite that was down by the river, but because people would, they, they found this uh, noxious weed around the place, they closed that um, river area off and fenced it off. And actually made a better area up here, which is nice and level, lots of gravels, lots of nice shade and things. And don't get fooled, um, we went to the uh, little uh, gazebo here and it said, Free Wi-Fi hotspot and things, woohoo! Because there is not, not much in the way of internet here, unless you've got one of those fancy boosters and things. And uh, yeah, it's been out for six years, according to one of the frequent travellers that come through here. So um, yeah, apart from that, nice and quiet. We're on our way.